Hi everyone, Deanne here. I just wanted to give you a quick update on where I'm at with the process of Spinraza. And then I was going to tell you a little bit more about my service dog. First of all, I do have an appointment July 10th with a neurologist down at the U of M. Now this will be for that baseline assessment and uh, I'm going to inquire more about Spinraza to see if it's a viable treatment for me. And I'm also working on getting an appointment with my local clinic to do a blood draw for that genetic testing. Uh, there's a little bit of a hold up. We're trying to get the orders in from the U of M and they don't seem to have them here at my local clinic. So working on that. But after that gets done, it should be about a week before I get the results back. And really what it's um, trying to find out is how many copies of that SMN2 gene that I have. And I guess insurances are requiring that you have at least two copies to even be considered for treatment. I'm not sure. Medicare is still being the biggest holdout, so anything I can do that will further that along is um, beneficial. So that's where I'm at with that. It's going to be a long, slow process, so we'll see. Now I wanted to talk to you about uh, how I got my service dog. I, getting a service dog is probably the biggest game changer in my life. I can't really imagine life without having a service dog anymore. Uh, Roy is my second service dog. My first service dog was Iken. And both of them I got through an organization called Canine Companions for Independence. Now they have different training centers around the nation. The one from my region is in Ohio. And the process took a long time to get a service dog, but it was well worth the wait. Let me back up here and I'll let you see Roy. You've probably seen him in past videos. But here, let's just see him again. Roy, step! Oh, you only get to see the back side of him today. <laughs> Anyway, uh, he's been a really good dog for me, and now he's giving me kisses. But um, let's see if we can get you to see his face. Roy, off. Roy, Roy, come here. Get a side step. Roy, step. There you go. You might be able to see him a little better. He doesn't have his vest on right now just because we're in our home setting. But when we do go out and about, he has his vest on. It's not his favorite thing in the world to wear his vest, but it's important to let people know that he is a service dog. And there's a little patch on his vest that says, please don't pet. Now, not everybody sees that right off the bat, uh, but it is important that to limit distractions when we're out in public. Roy, right, off. We'll let him take a nap since he was yawning there. <laughs> The process of getting a service dog varies from organization to organization. I'll let you know what I did through Canine Companions. And then, um, like I said, if you know of another organization, you'll just follow their procedure and their training methods. For Canine Companions, what they require is an initial application, which I filled out. And after they go through that, they uh, require a face-to-face -face interview. Now we did go to Ohio for that. It's a quite a trek from Minnesota, but again it was well worth it. And it was there they actually had a dog in training and they showed me what he did and it was just amazing. I even remember the dog's name was Royal. I don't know if he's still around or not. I kind of doubt it, but it was just amazing to see what they could do. After that, you just put on the list, and typically it's two and a half years to get a service dog. In my case, at the time that I had applied, there were a lot of dogs retiring from the program, and those recipients uh, get first priority in getting what they call a successor service dog, um, just because they've had a service dog and they've become dependent on them they kind of get bumped up to the list when their dog retires or passes away. I did experience that after I lost Ike into cancer six years after I had received him. Here's a picture of Ike and myself shortly before he passed away. 
after the initial interview and you're put on the list, they call you when they think they have a dog that would fit what your needs are. And they'll invite you to what they call team training. The first time I went through, there were six students and probably about eight dogs. Now they have in mind one or two dogs that they think will work really well with you. This is when Roy and I were partnered together in 2011. Before the dogs come to us, the first 18 months of their lives are spent with their puppy raisers. These are volunteers who agree to do basic training for the dogs and also expose them to do things of daily living, like their job or a playground or a classroom. Uh, my first service dog was actually raised in a penitentiary and he was an amazing dog as is my second service dog who was raised by a preschool teacher. After that initial 18 months, they are turned into Canine Companions for Independence or what they call advanced training. And this is more of the fine commands like the get command and different things like that. that uh, people with disabilities use on a daily basis. Here's Elroy as a puppy with his yellow vest. The yellow vest means they're a pup in training. The blue vest is when they graduate. Service dogs are taught, uh, I think it's up to 60 different commands. And then as an individual, we just build on what they already know. Uh, the most commands that I use is the one for turning on and off the light and the one uh, get, which means he'll pick up whatever I've dropped. He can pick up something as small as a penny off the carpeting. Another command that's important is up, and that um, means they'll put their front paws up on like the counter or something. And I've used that to help um, pay a cashier or grab the bag once the transaction is done. This is Roy when we were at the store doing an up to pay the cashier. Uh, so a lot of the commands are really important. Some that I've built on, I've taught Roy to get the phone by saying phone. And I've also taught him to pull the curtains shut. Um, I use the word curtain, but it's basically um, a twist on the tug command. He can also pull my feet forward if they've slipped back too far, which is kind of cool and he can open my gate going to the backyard and I've posted a few videos in the past of him doing some of these things so if you want to take a look you're welcome to go ahead and do so. Here's what the step command looks like from a distance. Canine Companions for Independence does not charge for their service dogs. That means that we get them at no cost. However, when they are in our care, we are responsible for veterinary care, feeding them, grooming them, everything like that. But I know some organizations do charge, and charge a lot for their service dogs. So it's very important to support organizations like Canine Companions that do such a great service for individuals. Here we are at team training where Roy is yawning yet again. CCI trains about four categories of dog. The first being the service dog, and they are partnered with someone with a disability uh, to just have more independence in their lives. Another category is called skilled companion, and these dogs are partnered with someone who might need some additional help with the dog. So they have another adult maybe being the responsible party, giving the dog commands and such. Um, Kids, some of the students with maybe autism might get a skilled companion, and just the student doesn't have as much of the responsibility as maybe the adult as far as handling the dog. Another category is a facility dog. Now these dogs go to different organizations, maybe a school, maybe a courthouse, um, just in the play different roles in the organization. Uh, sometimes at school they help kids with reading or in a courthouse they help with emotional support. So they're an important part of the organization. Another type of dog is called a hearing dog. 
And these dogs alert someone who is hard of hearing, maybe if the phone rings, or if someone's at the door, or if an alarm goes off. So those are the different categories of dogs. One thing to remember is that dogs still like to be dogs. So here we are out on the lake. I could probably talk about service dogs for hours. Um, but if you have any specific questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer your question to the best of my ability. I don't know everything, but I do like to talk about my service dog and let people know about him. So if you have questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.